Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to things you lied to about space. It's been a long time since I've done a space re like reaction and that's because, I mean, there's only so many reactions you can do. But I was just sort of looking through my YouTube and, yeah, trying to find reactions to do. And I saw this and, I mean, yeah, space, I enjoy learning about it. Maybe some of the things I've learned about are wrong. I don't know how legit this video is, but we're going to check it out anyway. And that is pretty much it. But hopefully you're going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon if you want to see some more of my reactions. And that is pretty much it. Let's jump into this and learn about some of the facts that maybe I've been lied to about. But yeah, let's jump into it. Our son looks nothing like this. I can already tell this guy is going to annoy me. <laughs> the way he's talking is going to annoy me. It looks more like this. If you've always thought our son was a bright yellow ball of fire, you were wrong. For starters, it's not yellow. It's green. Is that true? I don't know the how legit that is, but I mean, I've never I've never heard of this fact. I'm just gonna search it. Is the sun actually green? And if I bet if it says it is, I'm just gonna take every fact he says is um, legit. Is the sun green? This means the actual color of the sun is white. But the sun would have to emit only green light for our eyes to perceive it as green. Oh, okay, so it looks white, but I guess it's green, maybe? Is that what kind of what it's saying? Green. Uh, sort of. Oh, there we go. Scientists determine the temperature of a star by the color spectrum it emits. Each color has its own wavelength, and astronomers measure those wavelengths to tell how hot a star is. Cooler stars appear red, the hottest of the stars look blue. Our sun emits most of its energy at a wavelength that's close to green. But because it also emits other wavelengths, all these colors mix together and your eyes see this vibrant mixture as white. That is, if you look at the sun from the International Space Station. It is so crazy how bright the sun is even though we're so far from it. Like it's blinding from all this distance away. It's fucking ridiculous. Even from Earth, you look at the sun directly, you're you're done for. You're gonna get, you're gonna feel like you've been flashbanged for a few minutes. Like your eyes are a bit like they just they you can't see you for a little bit. There's like flashes. I, I notice sometimes when I look at really bright things and then I'll look away. I'll still have like the 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 picture of the bright thing in my eye, and it takes a few minutes for it to go before like I can start seeing normally again. From here on Earth, the sun looks yellow because our atmosphere is really good at scattering blue light and with all that blue wavelength gone all the other colors combine into yellow if our star was actually yellow it would be about 800 degrees celsius cooler our solar system's habitable zone would shrink and earth would become a frozen lifeless rock oh wow but that's not all because of the color not the only thing you were wrong about the sun is hot, but it's not on fire. Burning is a chemical reaction of oxygen with fuel. Like most stars out there, our sun is a ball of gas, mostly made up of hydrogen and helium. It doesn't have much oxygen in it. Instead, it works more like a gigantic nuclear reactor, constantly fusing hydrogen atoms to create helium inside its core. This process releases enormous amounts of energy, and that's why the sun is so scorching hot. Speaking of setting things on fire, let me tell you about explosions in space. It's not possible, yeah. is it? Are they possible? These aren't real. They're not possible, I feel like, because there's no oxygen. A spaceship can't go down in a violent blast because there's no air out there in space. No air means no oxygen, and oh, no oxygen, go. well, as you already know, means no fire. Sorry, Star Wars fans. It may seem that- I knew that fact, come on. There are too many stars in the night sky for you to count, but actually, you can. Although scientists at Harvard have already done it for you. According to the Yale Bright Star Catalog, there are 9,110 stars that you can see from Earth with the naked eye. How can they try to count? Surely they've miscounted. There's no way they've got that nailed on. They've 100% they've miscounted that. There's so much to look at. And the sky changes. I'm, I'm sorry, but come on now. 
that's going to be changing. Like, if surely, you know, I, I can't comprehend how they've counted that correctly. So, Think them yeah. all for yourself. Movies make it look like you need to be an extremely skilled pilot to navigate the asteroid belt, but eh, that's not true. The asteroid belt isn't some thick obstacle course of death. It does have trillions of space rocks that range in size from space dust to a quarter the size of the moon. About 100,000 of these asteroids are over one kilometer wide, but they're very spread out. The asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter is 225 million kilometers across. That's one and a half times the distance between Earth and the Sun. Damn. And this spreads the space rocks millions of kilometers apart. It's almost impossible for a spacecraft to collide with one. If you were thrown out of the airlock into the vastness of space, Oh, the idea of that just cringes me out, man. I can't lie. Even on planes, like I've seen videos of like um, the certain doors accidentally being opened whilst it was just flying in the sky, and obviously in in that atmosphere, it's insane. Like you can get sucked out and whatever. But in space, oh my god, it it makes me cringe. Obviously, this has never actually happened, has it? But has it? Wasn't there someone who was lost in space actually? I don't know the reaction to it, I think. Or was that not real? I can't remember. You wouldn't turn into a popsicle right away. That's because to freeze, there has to be a heat transfer from space to your body. But heat or cold doesn't travel very fast in the vacuum of space. Your body would freeze, but it would take hours to happen. And by then, you'd be long dead from something else. And no, you wouldn't explode in space either. You would inflate, though. Oh. That's because nitrogen in your bloodstream would gather into bubbles and puff you up to double your size. Oh, God. But that's not what's going to kill you. It's the lack of oxygen. After 15 seconds in space, your brain wouldn't get enough oxygen through your blood. And you'd lose consciousness. After two minutes in space, your other organs would start to shut down one by one. Game over. Space seems incredibly cold, but it's not. What? Is this factual information? In reality, space doesn't have a temperature at all. Temperature is defined by the speed at which particles move and the amount of energy they have. In the true vacuum of space, there are no particles to move around. That's why the vacuum is temperatureless. But by temperatureless, what does that mean? It's still cold, right? Of course, outer space isn't a perfect vacuum. It still has particles and radiation to produce heat. Some areas of space are actually really hot, like the space around stars. Well, no <laughs> come on, obviously. But the further away you get from stars, the more spread out the particles are, making those areas of space uh, pretty chilly. Some dense gas clouds can get as cold as minus 263 degrees Celsius. Oh. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, but surprisingly, it's not the hottest. It is extreme, oh. though. During the day, the surface temperature reaches 430 degrees. And at night, it drops to minus 180. Oof. But That's so fascinating how, because there's no atmosphere, it can get so cold and obviously so, so hot makes sense because it's so close, but so cold even though it's still so close to the sun. The most hellish planet in the solar system is Venus. You see, Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere to retain all that heat from the sun. The Venusian atmosphere, on the other hand, is very thick and it creates a greenhouse effect. Oh. It's like global warming on steroids. And it makes Venus a hot hell with a surface temperature of about 475 degrees. Disgusting. Our entire solar system isn't just sitting in one spot in our galaxy. It's hurtling through space at 220 kilometers per second. 
That's seven times faster than the speed that Earth revolves around the sun. Our solar system takes 230 million years to make one orbit around the Milky Way. Yeah, the last time we were in the same location we are now, Earth had one supercontinent and... Wait, so we're orbiting the Milky Way? I didn't even know that. The dinosaurs were just starting to roam around. Planets do not orbit around the sun. All the things in our solar system are in balance, and even though the sun is the most massive object in our planetary neighborhood, other planets are participating in this gravitational tug of war. Instead of orbiting the sun, planets and moons orbit around a central point between them and our star. This point is called the barycenter. For Earth, this barycenter is so close to the sun's core that there's not much of a difference, but for Jupiter, this point is about 55,000 kilometers away from the center of the sun. So the gas giant and the sun are orbiting each other. Earth appears round oh, from wow. space, but it's actually an irregularly shaped ellipsoid. I mean, obviously it's not a complete circle. I don't think there's any actual circular, completely circular planets. That wouldn't really be possible. It bulges at the equator, thanks to the centrifugal force caused by our planet's spin. As a result, Earth is about 43 kilometers wider at the equator than it is at the poles. It's so weird how this is the view from space. Like, I mean, obviously, you see pictures from space all the time. And by the way, this is probably like AI generated or whatever, but... This is what we all have. Like, you go below these clouds, you go just above these clouds when you're obviously on a plane and stuff. But it's just, it's so baffling to think this is the view of what everything is on. Crazy world, man. And then there's just all this nothingness around it. Like, it's just so weird. But then you've got all this weird, ah, oh, it's, whenever I get into space reactions, it always makes me want to look into it more. But there's only so much you can know about space, sadly. I mean... They're trying to learn new things every day, but it's just obviously such a slow pr um, process because it's such a big amount of area. I mean, it's infinite area, pretty much. So, but all of this is where everything happens, and it's so tiny in this in this nothingness. Oh, it's weird, man. This makes gravity at the bulge slightly weaker, making it easier to launch spaceships from the equatorial regions than from the poles. In space, oh. no one can hear you scream. <laughs> That's only true to a point. Sound needs a medium to travel through, and in space, molecules are very far apart, so the sound fades away before it can get very far. All the cosmic catastrophes, supernovas, and colliding black holes go quiet before you can hear them. But some places in space have a lot of particles for sound to travel through like the hot gas cloud around the black hole at the center of the Perseus galaxy cluster. It has so much gas that you can actually hear the black hole. This is what it sounds like. This is actual sound footage or whatever. You know, other planets make noise too. If you could hear them, do you know what they... Was that, was that actually real, a real sound from the black hole? If that's the case, goddamn. Um, nobody ever told us the sun was burning. We obviously got taught the fusion process of stars. To be fair, I couldn't really remember, but obviously it's obvious it's not burning. Does that sound? It sounds like a flipping a whale, <laughs> a blue whale. Times a, a blue whale on crack. That's what it sounds like. But um, yeah, fascinating. Watch. I don't know how. I mean, I'm gonna assume all of these were legit, right? I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that is the case. But hopefully you did enjoy. And yeah, if you want more space reactions, like I say all the time, I'm always up for doing them. But I just don't know really what videos there are out there to watch. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to see more. And yeah, until next time, like, subscribe, and peace.